This is a post I made on my university's gym club Facebook group eight years ago. This was before I ever stepped on a bodybuilding stage, a powerlifting platform, or recorded a single minute of YouTube footage. And the reason I'm showing you this is this one number in particular. My one rep max at the time of 275 pounds on the bench press. Since then, on this YouTube channel, we have gone through six men's physique competitions, two bodybuilding shows, one powerlifting meet, and eight years of training. And throughout all this time, one goal has remained at the back of my mind to train normally with what used to be my absolute maximum. Specifically to bench press, my former one rep max for a regular plain old four sets of eight reps. In 2016, I got painfully close, stopping just 10 pounds shy of my goal after failing on 265 and subsequently losing significant strength due to injury in my 2016 competition prep. And in 2020, I achieved a personal best single set record after hitting 275 for an AMRAP of nine reps. All of this has led me to this day and this video. This number, which has sat at the back of my mind and refused to loosen its grasp for almost a decade. Like a song that gets stuck in your head and plays over and over again on repeats for eight fucking years. And today, today's the day that we finally shut this shit down. <laughs> Big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, ExpressVPN. So every time you connect to the internet via an unencrypted Wi-Fi network, whatever you do online is not private. This could be your internet service provider keeping track of every single website you visit, or even potential hackers looking to steal your personal information. ExpressVPN solves all of this. By rerouting your network data through their servers and encrypting your internet connection, this protects you and your personal data from prying eyes. And there are other multiple benefits as well when it comes to things like torrenting or using streaming platforms. Take Netflix, for example. A lot of people were very upset when Netflix announced that they were no longer carrying the office when in reality they actually are in Canada. All you need to do is boot up ExpressVPN, make like two clicks, connect to any server in Canada and boom, you are watching The Office or any other show or movie not available in your region. And best of all, my viewers can get three months of ExpressVPN absolutely free by going to expressvpn.com slash Igor or clicking the link in the description box below. All right, guys, 275, enough talk. Let's, let's fucking do this. I'm gonna show you guys set number one, absolutely raw. And then I'm gonna do a bit of commentary over sets two and three. And then we're gonna watch the final set, absolutely raw. Either way, 275, eight reps, set number one. That being successful. Ah! When you have a complete situation, that means that you have developed your body, meaning your health, your strength, your energy, and your mind. Do it. Ah! You can do it. You can be the greatest. The bigger your goals are, or especially if someone else has never done it. Then the people will always say, this is crazy, this is going to happen. Okay, so that's felt and looked relatively good. This was extremely important to me because I could tell if I'm doing like a certain working weight that day, based on how fast the bar is moving, based on how much my form breaks down, was an RPE 10 or an RPE 7? In this case, I think it was more like an eight. All of this is going to tell me right off the bat whether or not this goal for the day is even possible. Because if the first set is like an RPE 10 and it looks like shit, and it looks like you're lifting on Jupiter with four times Earth's gravity, then game over, you're done. And thank God today that wasn't the case. Because I told myself, this is pretty much your only chance. Spoiler alert for you guys, this bulk, when it ends, I am essentially done with this. And I told myself that come hell or high water, whether I get this, I don't, good, bad, whatever, day 61, that's it. We are going into a cut. We are going into a fat loss phase. I am, I'm finished with being at my current level of body fat. It's been fun, I'm done. And so I told myself that, listen, this is it. You don't have another chance. For me, once the calories and the carbs are cut down, it's it's done, it's over. I mean, it's not so bad that it's like strength drops off a cliff, but 
What used to be easy, like a week or two ago when I was eating more, is now challenging. And what used to be challenging is now impossible. And I knew that at this point, this is essentially where I have peaked. This is it. If I don't do this right now, there's no next, there's no tomorrow, there's no next week. Once the cut comes in, strength, it's, it's gonna take a hit. I already know it, and I know that this is essentially my one last chance. But yeah, I'm gonna shut up now. I'm gonna let this one play out. This is 275, eight reps, fourth set. This is the most that I've ever attempted. Yes! This, guys, this felt so fucking good because it's taken a while. It's, you know, again, guys, the title of the video, it's not eight weeks, it's not even eight months, it's eight fucking years. But to come all the way here, what used to be my maximum is now just like something I do normally. And it feels especially good because I don't talk about this that much, but to do it naturally, it feels good. Because like, listen, I'll, if I see it, you guys definitely see it. We've all seen it. You turn on YouTube, you turn on like TikTok or whatever, and you see these like fucking 19 year old kids, people who barely hit puberty a couple years ago, and they are doing crazy shit. They are doing numbers which took me 10 years to get to, and they look like full grown bodybuilders who look like they're 30 years old, and they're like, no, I'm 19, and I'm just benching three plates for reps. And then you realize, oh, it's because it's like everybody's taking shit these days because it's just, it's become so prevalent. Everybody's like, you know, either on test or DECA or they're just going and buying SARMs on the internet. 20 years ago, it was like, bro, you're taking protein, right? Now it's like, bro, you're taking Austrian, right? Or LGD or whatever the hell. They're... It's it's become common now, unfortunately. And so you see this sometimes and sometimes it does make you kind of feel like, shit, if they're doing that, maybe I should too. I mean, I want those gains. I want that muscle. I want that strength. And I'm... I'm kind of happy to show, I'm not trying to like blow my own horn or blow smoke up my own ass, but I am trying to show you an alternative. If you are someone who's a bit more apprehensive towards crossing that path and going down that route, you don't have to. You just have to accept the fact that it's going to take longer. It's not gonna be nearly as easy, it's not gonna be nearly as fast, but it can happen. I'm living proof of that if you're very, very, patient. And also, obviously, it feels good to sit here and say that I was able to do this without the negative health ramifications, without the need to value pharmacology over everything else. Well, I guess not over everything else, but include pharmacology as a factor along with nutrition, training, all these things that, you know, I grew up on when I was a kid. This is what I thought mattered. And then to have this other thing included, it kind of sucks and I kind of don't want to do that. And the fact that I was able to do it without that, it feels good. It, Took a while, but it feels um, feels good. So I wanna use this opportunity to talk a little bit about the way that I'm training because some of you guys out there who may be kind of like trying to implement something similar or maybe emulate me to a certain extent, especially if you are a bit younger or newer to training, you may want to be careful. And in some cases, you downright may want to avoid this. Now, there's a couple reasons for this, but first, let me give you a couple examples. Number one is me about a year ago. I was doing a very similar set of training style in terms of programming relatively heavy weights. Again, whenever you are training with anything, in my opinion, like under 10 reps, I would classify that as relatively heavy. And this can lead to 
injury. This is exactly what happened in my case last year when I was kind of training with this style of programming, bumping up five or 10 pounds every few weeks until I got to about 250 pounds, pec sprain, boom, I'm out of the gym, or at least I'm out of all pushing upper body exercises for a solid two months, give or take. And just recently, I saw another example of this. This was Christian Guzman on his Instagram. I saw he posted a story and it was like, messed up my left pec. Even the way he worded it, it wasn't like, oh, this is kind of a surprise. He's like, as always, flat bench press again. You can tell that it's not his first time, you know, it's not his first rodeo when it comes to injuring himself on this movement. And this is actually a great segue into an article I want to mention. This one came out uh, about a month or two ago, so it's very fresh, hot off the presses. And this one was a meta-analysis, so it actually, it's an article or a study which looked at multiple other studies and kind of pools their, their results together to come to a conclusion. And essentially the conclusion of this article, and kind of why I think it's very relative to me and you guys and what we're doing in this video, is that they found that as long as individuals, when they are training, even if it's with lighter loads, as long as they are going relatively close to failure, so in essence training hard, they actually found similar results from a muscle hypertrophy standpoint as individuals training with much heavier loads. I actually did a video on this very topic a few years ago. I think it was called like high or low reps, which one do you need? And essentially in that video, I found relatively similar findings that from a muscle hypertrophy standpoint, in terms of how big you can get, so bodybuilding essentially, it doesn't necessarily matter whether you use heavy or somewhat lighter weights as long as you are still training hard. You're not leaving like eight reps in the tank. To read you one direct quote from this article, quote, the study by Schoenfeld et al. showed no significant different changes in muscle thickness between higher loads, we're talking 93% of your one rep max, or lower loads, 67% of your one rep max uh, groups in an eight-week training program with trained men. Schoenfield indicated that increased metabolic stress experienced by the lower load group may potentially offset the higher mechanical loads experienced by the higher load group and could have led to similar improvements in hypertrophic gains. Essentially, what they are hypothesizing is that yes, your overall levels of mechanical tension are obviously going to be less when you train with lower weight. However, the overall increased metabolic stress on the target muscle, remember there are supposedly, it's still not that well understood, but supposedly there are three kind of sources or factors when it comes to inducing muscle hypertrophy. That factor alone is somewhat going to make up for the fact that the, clearly there's less mechanical tension with less loads. The inclusion of lighter resistance training, approximately 30 to 67% of an individual's one rep max to failure in a resistance training program may provide a stimulus of sufficient magnitude to drive the hypertrophic adaptive response without subjecting the individual to a heightened risk of injury. My training, at least recently, has been very focused on strength because that's one thing that I personally value, at least at this training cycle in my life. However, if you're watching my channel and trying to learn from a bodybuilding muscle hypertrophy standpoint, strength for you is important, but it may not be the most important factor. Remember, hypertrophy for muscle size and strength are very similar, but they're not the same thing. It's like, I've always thought of these two goals sort of as siblings. It's kind of like they're brother and sister. They are not the same thing. They are not clones with one another. It's very difficult for you to get one without getting the other, but that being said, they are not the same thing. At the end of the day, it is possible for you to train in a way which is optimized for hypertrophy, but not necessarily for strength, and this would be an example of that. However, if you are okay with this, you are okay with your strength gains being seven out of 10 optimized as opposed to 10 out of 10, then this may apply to you. And the reason why is because you may be able to train harder, longer, and most importantly, injury free. Perhaps if I didn't train with this relatively heavy emphasis on my rep ranges, I would not have gotten injured last year around this time. Perhaps in Christian's case, had he been training with a somewhat lighter load and overall higher rep range, maybe the risk of injury in his case would have been somewhat diminished, allowing him to train harder longer and not have to take what is probably now at least a little bit of time off. So all of this is kind of interesting, and although we already did know this to a certain extent, again, I did a video on this topic a few years ago, it is interesting to see new science, new articles come out kind of reinforcing this and sort of adding to the overall pool of evidence for this specific concept.
Either way, guys, that about does it for me on this specific lesson. We have one video left in this experiment uh, mini-series, and ultimately my final opinion and overall analysis on terkesteron. What is it, how powerful is it, and most importantly, is it worth you guys giving this a try? We're gonna do a full physique update, we've got a DEXA scan scheduled, overall exciting stuff coming to a YouTube screen near you. But until that time comes, as always guys, thank you for stopping by, I appreciate each and every one of you, and I'll see you in the exciting conclusion.